How's it going everyone? Hope you're all well. Mr. Boulder here and I'm back today with my first ever cassette update. I uh, started to get back into collecting tapes back uh, towards the end of last year. Um, I'm not going to go crazy with collecting tapes so I'm just going to be picking up the uh, the bands and the albums that I really really like. Um, so without any further ado we're going to get straight into it. As per usual with my collection updates I'll go from the lighter side of things to the heavier side of things. So we're going to be kicking off with a band that a lot of people are not going to know. Uh, this is To Die For. Now these guys are from here in the UK, but I don't know where because there's very little information about them on, on the internet. Um, so uh, a reason a lot of people want to know these guys is because um, this is their first album and they're a hard rock band. And there lies the problem because of course hard rock in 1992 was on its ass because grunge had come along and pretty much wiped out this entire scene. But that doesn't mean that there weren't new bands coming along creating great music and great albums. And this is a great album from these guys. Great stuff on this, like Deliver Me From Evil, You Got What It Takes, Come Inside, Make Your Mind Up, Emotional Earthquake. If you're into hard rock and you've not heard this, these are definitely worth checking out. Excellent album. This was still sealed when it turned up. Amazing. 31-year-old cassette still in the shrink. There it is, just a clear tape. Good stuff, like I say, if you're into that kind of thing and you're not familiar with it, definitely worth checking out. Up next, an album that everyone will know, this is Bon Jovi, Slippery When Wet from 1986. An absolute pop metal behemoth. My brother got this exact cassette um, all the way back at Christmas 1987. There's the tape. Um, yeah, great stuff. I mean, you'll know songs from this album even if you're not a fan of the band stuff like living on a prayer you could love a bad name wanting the dead or alive absolutely massive songs but as always with great albums um all the uh, the, the hidden gems are just as good as the big single stuff on this like uh, wild in the streets social disease raise your hands etc etc fantastic stuff a 10 out of 10 album no bad songs on that absolutely love it bon jovi slippery when wet up next is Extreme Pornography, superb album. Again, for me, this is another 10 out of 10 album. No bad songs on this. Um, Paul Geary and Pat Badger providing the rhythm section. The excellent Gary Trone on the vocals and the really, really talented Mr. Nuno Betancourt on the guitar. That guy really knows how to play the guitar. Again, you'll know some songs from this, even if you're not a fan of the band, because More Than Words was a massive single all over the world. Uh, Get the Funk Out was another big single from this. But loads of other great tracks on this, like Decadence Dance. Um, it's the Monster, that's my favourite. It's a Monster, just a, an amazing song. Um, Lil Jack Horney's on this as well, which is excellent. Uh, he Man, Woman Hater, Song for Love. Um, what's the other one right at the end? Whole High, that's it. Yeah, excellent stuff. Absolutely love this album. No bad songs in it at all. This is pretty cheap to pick up, so I'm really glad to get that collection. Extremes Pornography from 1990. Uh, three from the same band next, uh, Rat, Invasion of Your Privacy, or Privacy. Um, second full length from these guys, excellent album. Just a black cassette. Uh, this has got my favourite Rat song on it, Lay It Down. That guitar riff, intro guitar riff, is an absolute monster. Excellent solo as well from Warren Demartini. Uh, more great stuff, and it's like You're In Love, Never Use Love. Um, got Me On The Line, Dangerous But Worth The Risk. Excellent album from these guys. Really, really good glam metal from the 80s. Um, the follow-up to that, 1986, is Dancing on the Cover. Again, just a blank, black tape, I should say. Um, brilliant stuff. Great stuff on this, like Body Talk. Um, uh, Slip of the Lip, great track. Dance, 7th Avenue, Enough is Enough. Brilliant album from these guys. Absolutely love that. Um, really, really good album. And the follow-up to that, 1988's Reach for the Sky. Another fantastic album. Absolutely love this. This one just on the clear tape. Uh, brilliant stuff. And it's like Way Cool Junior. Great track, that is. Uh, I Want a Woman's really good. Um, City to Sea. No surprises. Um, what's it going to be? What I'm after. Uh, just a couple of tracks on this that I'm not quite so keen on, but they're still, they're still okay. But um, there's some absolutely fantastic stuff on this. And I absolutely love this album. So that's Rats. Um, Reach for the Sky from 1988. I want to sing a little bit heavier now. 
Iron Maiden and Power Slave, a course an album in the band that needs absolutely no introduction. Clear Tape, uh, Two Minutes to Midnight, Ace is High. Uh, the title track, um, Rhyme the Ancient Mariner, absolutely classic new wave of British heavy metal. Definitely had to get this. Absolutely superb album that is perfect. No bad songs in it at all. Maybe one kind of weak one. Uh, the instrumental. Still like it, but um, certainly not as essential as the rest of the stuff on this. But Power Slave is superb. Another one from Maiden. Seventh Son of the Seventh Son. Uh, one of my favourite Maiden albums, actually. Absolutely love this. Clear tape. Um, I know a lot of people don't like Can I Play With Madness. Um, I've got no problem with it though, but other great stuff in this, like The Evil That Men Do. Title track, Only The Good Die Young. Um, Infinite Dreams, I think, is a great song as well, but doesn't get talked about enough. Uh, opens up with Moonchild as well. This is really, really good album. Definitely one of my favourites from these guys. Absolutely superb stuff. And the last Maiden one for today, uh, No Prayer For The Dying from 1990. And now it doesn't get a lot of love from a lot of people, but not me. I really enjoy it. I'll be the first to admit it's not as good as what come before it, but I've still plenty of stuff in this that I really, really enjoy. Uh, Hooks in You is a fantastic song. The very underrated Mother Russia finishes this album, but other great stuff like Tail Gunner. Uh, Holy Smoke, great track as well. Uh, title track's good. The Assassin's a bit weak, but um, still a good album. You know, like I say, not as good as the few that come before it. But still decent, really like that one. On to some thrash now. Uh, Megadeth, uh, Peace Sells But Who's Buying from 1986. Excellent stuff, just a clear cassette. Great stuff on this, like Wake Up Dead, The Conjuring, Peace Sells, uh, Devil's Island, uh, Side One is all the good stuff. Good Morning Black Friday's good. Bad Omen's okay. Um, I Ain't Superstitious, a cover version. Not really that essential, but ends with my last words, which is absolutely fantastic. Really glad to get this one in the collection. But not as glad as this. I've really had to get this one because this is just an absolute beast. And of course, it's Rust in Peace from 1990. For me, recorded by my favourite Megadeth lineup: uh, Mustaine, Ellison, of course, uh, Marty Friedman, and the uh, sadly departed Nick Menza. Rest in peace. An absolute thrash classic, a thrash to piece, as some people would say. Just fantastic. Uh, um, Holy Wars first track just blew me away when I first heard it. It's just such an excellent, excellent song. Uh, Hangar 18, of course, on this. Five Magics, Take No Prisoners. That's one of my favourite songs of the entire album. Poison Was a Cure. Lucretia, Tornado of Souls. Just absolutely essential. Uh, no thrash metal album is complete without this in it. Rust in Peace from Megadeth from 1990 is an absolute beast, and I definitely had to grab this. Excellent, excellent album. Really, really love it. And this one I had to grab, and this is not essential in the slightest, but it's such an important album to me. And if you've watched my channel for um, a while, you'll know that. But Countdown to Extinction from 1992 is an absolutely fantastic album. This is like Megadeth's version of uh, Metallica's The Black Album, of course. Much more stripped back, um, much more commercial sounding. Uh, Symphony of Destruction was the very first riff I ever learned to play on the guitar. Love that song, Skin of My Teeth, a great tune. Architecture of Aggression is, again, a fantastic tune. Sweat and Bullets. Uh, this Was Just Your Life. Um, what's the other one I'm thinking of in here? High Speed Dirt on side two. Um, like I say, not essential, but for me, it's absolutely a massively important album. Coming along such an important time for me back in 1992, and I absolutely love it, so I had to grab that. Uh, excellent album. On to a different band now, Metallica and the Black Album. Hated by many, but not me. Absolutely love this stuff. This looks like exactly the same as the tape that I had back in the day. Here's the clear cassette. I'm not going to talk about this too much because, of course, everyone knows this. But for me, there's some underrated songs that don't get talked about enough, like uh, Holier Than Now, The Struggle Within, Through The Never, The God That Failed. A lot of people hate it. Not me. I think it's absolutely fantastic. The Black Album from 1991 is absolutely huge. Uh, not going to talk about this one too much because, of course, it's everywhere at the moment, but it's the brand new Metallica album, 72 Seasons. Um, I'm really, really loving this. A lot of people are on the fence. Some people love it, some people hate it. Here it is on the yellow cassette, or the yellow shell, as people say these days. 
Great album. Really enjoying that one. Like I said, I'm not going to talk about it anymore. For me, a huge album from 1992, and this is Pantera and the vulgar display of power. This, for me, it was the passing of the torch um, for heavy music. And when I say heavy music, I'm talking sort of commercial heavy music. Um, I wasn't familiar with death metal in 1992, or I'd heard of it, but I wasn't listening to it. I didn't start listening to death metal until 93. But, of course, Thrash was seriously dead by this point. And for me, Pantera um, were the ones that took the torch and ran with it. One of the biggest bands of the 1990s, no doubt about it. This is an absolutely huge album. Uh, just a clear shell. Me and my friend Glenn played this cassette to death back in, in 1992 and probably well into 1993 as well. Huge songs on this. Mouth for War, a new level. Absolutely love that intro guitar riff. Walk, massive song. Fucking hostile. Great track. Other great stuff as well, like Live in a Hole, Regular People, By Demons Be Driven, The Hollow. Huge, huge album. Probably from the biggest band of the 1990s for metal, as far as I'm concerned. For commercial metal, anyway. Excellent stuff from Pantera. I absolutely love that essential album. Excellent, excellent stuff. Uh, just two more to go. I had to get this. Arise, Sepultura. For me, the best Sepultura album. A lot of people go with Beneath the Remains. But for me, personally, this is my favourite. Just absolutely phenomenal. I'll never forget when I first heard it back in about 94, something like that. Um, just an absolute masterpiece. Um, the musicianship is absolute top draw. Max Cavalera's vocals are excellent. Production's fantastic. Just a huge album. Absolutely massive. Uh, White Shell. Uh, Desperate Cry on this. Absolutely phenomenal. Dead Embryonic Cells. Top track. Uh, what else have we got here? Murder's a great track as well. Subtraction. Oh, it's State. Under Siege. No bad songs on this. Absolutely perfect. A 10 out of 10 album. Essential thrash metal. Bordering on death metal. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. Sepultura's Arise from 1991 for me is absolutely essential. And the last one for today. Death. Individual thought patterns from 1993. And now that I think gets overlooked a little bit. When it comes to death, people don't often talk about this one too much. But well, I think it's fantastic. Technical death metal from Chuck Shaw, Diner and Company. Uh, Andy LaRock, or LaRoque, not sure how you pronounce it, from uh, King Diamond's band on the lead guitar. The very talented Mr. Steve DiGiorgio on bass and the incredibly talented Mr. Gene Hogan on the drums. What a lineup! How can you go wrong with those that pedigree of musicians? I had this uh, style cassette back in the day, uh, the black cassette. Excellent album. The Philosopher on this is one of my favourite death songs. That intro guitar riff is just fantastic. Um, there's other great stuff in this, like um, In Human Form. Tile, uh, sorry, the first track, Overactive Imagination. The title track, Individual Thought Patterns is great. Jealousy, Trapped in the Corner. Nothing is Everything. Mentally Blind. Destiny, Out of Touch. Ten tracks. Ten absolute beastly songs. An absolutely perfect album. I had to get it. Even though I picked up the reissued one back at Christmas, I had to get this one as well. Individual Thought Patterns from 1993. An absolutely fantastic technical death metal masterpiece. Excellent, excellent album from Death. Brilliant stuff. And that's the last one for today. So guys, hope you enjoyed that. Thank you very much for watching. As per usual, it's much appreciated. Thank you for all the new subscribers. Picked up quite a few new subs recently. And of course, thank you if you've been with me from the off. Very much appreciated. I'll be back next week with the Judas Priest album ranking. Uh, get in the comments section. Let me know what you think about these cassette pickups. And until then, cheers, take care, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.